Now there's one more exciting new color feature that I want to show you while we're working on backgrounds, and that is gradients. With CSS3, we can actually create linear or radial gradients that we can use inside of our div block elements. So let's go try that out. I'll go back to our document here. The first thing I'll do is I'll just hide that second div so we can work back with the first one again. So I'll reset it back to display none. And let's concentrate on the top div here. I'll leave the background color as it is, and that's actually a good idea to use as a fallback where browsers can't show the gradients that we're about to try. But underneath that, let's add a new gradient definition. I'll start by using the background property, and what we'll do is we'll assign that background a gradient color. Currently, every single browser needs a prefix for this. And since I'm working with the Firefox browser, I'm going to use the prefix for Firefox to make sure it works here. And that is dash MOZ. That's short for Mozilla, and that's the name of the group that heads up the Firefox committee. Now after the prefix, I'll have another dash, and then I'm going to set up the name of the gradient property. In this case, we're going to do a linear gradient. So I add those two words also separated by dashes. Now we can specify the gradient, and we do so inside of a set of parentheses. So I'll add the beginning, and I'll go ahead and add the end, and then I'll just move my cursor inside so we can type the rest. Now basically, we need to provide it with a direction, and then the color stops that we want to have our gradient run through. Now let's try this out on a real easy left to right gradient. I'll start off by setting the direction. I'm going to start towards the left, so I'll add in left and a comma. And then I'd specify the color that we want to use on the left. I'll just use the color we're using for the background, which is this green we set up before. Remember, now in CSS3, I can use any color definition I want. So I could use a hex value here or a simple color name, but I'll just paste in that green color that we did before. That's going to be the starting color for my gradient. I'll add another comma, and then I'll add the ending color. And what I'll do is I'll use the RGBA color that we specified for our other div here before. Now I've specified a direction and a starting and ending color. Let me finish off my style and let's go see what it looks like in the Firefox browser. I'll save my changes, go back and refresh the browser, and now you can see that my div is now filled with a gradient that runs from left on the green and goes over to the blue color on the right mixing the colors in between in a nice gradient ramp. This property, like the last one, has some additional values that we can add to it to control the gradient a little bit more. So let's go back to our document, let's see what we can do. One of the things we can do is we can have as many gradient stops for colors as we'd like, just simply add them onto the end. So here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy the first color, that's the green that we used before, and what I'll do is go down to the end of our statement, I'm inside of the last parentheses, and I'll just add a comma, and that indicates that we're going to have another color. And then I'll just paste the other color in. Now our gradient should start from the left, and it should be green, blue, green. Let's save our changes and see what it looks like. And this time when I refresh, you can see it's going from green to blue at the midpoint, and then back to green again at the other end. Now we can also play with the direction. In this case, I went from left, and if we did it right, it would just flip it around the horizontal axis. But I could use top or bottom as well. So let's try that. I'll put it in as top this time. Save that change, and we'll go back and refresh our page. And now you can see we've changed the direction of the gradient to go from top to bottom. Now for more complex gradients, in addition to being able to specify as many color stops as you want, you can also specify the position of the stops. Let's take a look at our code again. In our last example, we gave three color stops. And what the browser does is it divides that div up into three equal spaces. So our first color stop is at the beginning, the second one is at the 50% point, and the third one is at the end. If we were to provide four colors instead of three, they would be divided up evenly as well. To specify the position of a color, what we do is go in right after the color, and we set a position by either pixels or, generally, percentages. I'll go after the first color, and I'm going to specify that that's going to be placed at a 25% point. You can see there's just a space in between the color and the position. And I'll just do that for the other two setups as well. 
I'm going to set this one at 75 so we'll be able to see the difference. So we'll put that at 75%. And I'll leave the measurement off for the last one, which should put it at the end where it normally is. Let me save my changes, and let's go see how that affects our gradient. I'll refresh the page, and there you can see we've got a higher green band there at the beginning. And if we mark off the position of our colors as we go along, I start off with the green color, and you can see that that goes to a 25% point as a starting point now. The blue color is at 75, and we can see it's just starting to transition to blue here at 50, and the pure blue color comes right up here at 75. The last green color, since we didn't specify a position, gets dropped at the end like it normally would. So we can really use this property to make very complex gradient backgrounds and not have to supply an image each time. Now there is one more thing that we can do with this, and that is, in addition to linear gradients, we can do radial gradients. Those are gradients that start at the center and move outwards. So all I need to do for that is change the word linear to radial, and then we want to change the direction, because top and left and right don't make sense for a radial gradient. Here I'll just use the word circle to describe how I want the gradient to radiate out from the center. And we'll leave all of our colors and the stops for the colors the same. Let's save our changes, and let's go see what our gradient looks like now. Now you can see our gradient still starts at green, and the 25% line is now from the center out to the edge. So you can see that the green goes out to 25%, the blue is at 75%, and out at the very tips of the corners here, you can see that at 100%, we're back to green again. Now in the last section, we talked about the prefixes, and if I was designing this one gradient for all the rest of the browsers, I would simply do it by copying this line where we define our gradient, and I'll paste it in three more times, once for each one of our additional browser groups. Now our first one is set to Mozilla, and that'll handle Firefox. So for the second one, let's set that up for our most common next browser, which is going to be the Chrome and Safari browsers, and those are our WebKit browsers. The Microsoft Explorer browser past version 9 does support this as well, and for that we need a prefix of MS in front of the property definition. And finally, there's the Opera browser to take into account. And the typical prefix for the Opera browser is just simply O. Now you can see we've repeated that same structure four times, once for each one of the browsers. So when we publish this page, whatever browser our user is working with, it'll be showing the gradient properly. Now remember earlier I showed you a great shortcut site for being able to generate CSS3 code. And I also showed you I was using the ColorZilla plugin with my Firefox browser. Well, let me go out to the ColorZilla homepage, and they have another really nice resource that we can make use of. Here's where you can download the plugin that I've been using inside my browser. They also have a gradient generator. And if I click over on this side, I've got a place where I can design very complex gradients, set opacities and colors and locations, and what the program will do is it'll generate the CSS code for me, providing me code for every single browser that we're working with. I'll also point out down at the bottom here, you see one that says filter proj ID DX image transform Microsoft gradient. This is actually a gradient setting that will work on Microsoft browsers that are earlier than the version 9 browser. So you can get your gradients to look good on Internet Explorer browsers 6 through 8 as well.